Welcome to my channel this will be my first video so I hope you enjoyed oh and also this fanfic is a translation from a different language so things may not make sense sometimes but bear with me alright let's begin. Chapter 1. Prologue. Well, what was that important thing you were talking about, old man? A man with black hair and blonde bangs would ask with a somewhat bored tone, as if he didn't have time to be there. The older man rubbed his huge beard while giving a small smile and looking at his three guests. Right now you'll see, Azazel. I don't understand why they called me, if it's a meeting of three faction leaders, could you explain it to me, Odin? He would declare a white-haired young man with blue eyes, while he remained with his arms crossed. I take this to be something that concerns you as well, brat. The old man would say, already identified as Odin. A man who looked about 34 years old appeared behind Odin, while giving a small bow. They're coming, sir. Good job, Roswell. He would nod Odin to the now identified Roswell, giving him a smirk. Right at that moment, a magic circle appeared between the guests and the locals, two men coming out of it. The guests were surprised to see the first man. What does this mean, Odin? The blonde man who looked about 28 years old would declare. Calm down, Michael. I don't come here with the same intentions as a few months ago. He would declare a gravity-defying white-haired man with a smirk. I wasn't referring to my son, if not to, Odin wouldn't finish speaking, since they all looked at the white-haired young man with wide-open eyes, something that I miss them a lot, except for Odin who gave a small smile. Is something wrong, Valley? Azazel would ask, opting for a rather serious look. That energy, I know it very well. Vali would say as she pointed to the man who was behind Loki, with a hood that did not allow him to see his face. At Vali's response, the guests looked at the hooded man in surprise. The brown robed subject's eyes shone violet, and then slowly proceeded to remove his hood. At this, Azazel, Vali and Michael would change their expressions to one of complete shock to see who it was. It's been a while, folks. Issei would say, finishing removing the hood completely. Prologue. False Awakening, The Rising of a Demon Without Demonic Corruption. Nine months before, W.O.W.F., Issei would cough up a large amount of blood, while looking at the huge hole in his stomach, expelling a large amount of blood. If you want to blame someone, blame God for creating the sacred gear that resides within you. He would declare a woman who would have black wings in a masochistic outfit, then disappear with a purple magic circle. Wonderful memories, thank you. Sacred what? Issei would wonder, as she fell to the ground and continued to expel a large amount of blood from the hole in her stomach. Issei clung tightly to his stomach with one hand, as his eyes began to go dull and a pool of blood expanded below him. Is it really? In this little park, in an inexplicable way I, will I die? Issei would think, with regret in her words. At least, if you were going to kill me, you would have let me touch one of your breasts, Issei would say to then raise his bloody hand and put it in front of his face, only to squeeze it tightly, while a few drops of blood fell on his face. No, I wouldn't be seeing my blood right now, if I hadn't been such an idiot and let myself be fooled by just a pair of tits. Issei would think with great anger, while her consciousness slowly faded from her body, leaving him with one last thought. If I had a second chance, I, would do my best to change that part of me. Finally, Issei's consciousness disappeared completely, dying in an absurd and inexplicable way. Today is your lucky day, brat. That, Issei would yell with a clearly scared tone in her voice. Quickly, the chestnut would look around, to see that everything was on fire. He couldn't process exactly what was happening, as a huge red-scaled dragon appeared in front of him, giving a great roar that left him deaf for a few seconds. I can finally talk to you, mate. The dragon would say, with a more relaxed tone in his voice. Talk to me, Issei would ask with confusion. Buddy, I would ask with even more confusion. I know, this will all be new to you. But I'll help you as much as I can. He would declare the dragon with a serious tone, then spread his wings. However, I must admit that I am genuinely surprised. Barely six hours after your resurrection and you were already able to strike up a conversation with me. The dragon would declare, with a somewhat intrigued tone in his voice. Issei would widen his eyes in shock. Resurrection. What the hell? The huge crimson dragon turned its head back, as it began to shine with great intensity. Looks like your dream is coming to an end. 
We'll talk in a second, mate. Oh. She would scream Issei loudly, sitting up on her bed and breathing heavily, while she felt how the sweat ran all over her body. Stop yelling. Oh you're sleeping outside today. A woman would be heard screaming from outside the room. Issei would rub his hair somewhat embarrassed. I'm sorry, mom. The latter I would say under my breath. Issei would make himself comfortable in his bed and close his eyes tightly for a few seconds, then open them with a confused expression. What a weird dream I had today. Issei would think, to then play it down. Issei would get up from his bed, to start putting on his pants, to stop in the middle of the process. A dream. That means Yuma. It's all real, brat. Issei would give a small cry of surprise and fall to the floor, with half of his pants on, then quickly get up and look in all directions frantically. Asterisk on your right arm, brat. The thick voice would resound again. Issei lowered his gaze and widened his eyes in shock as he saw an oval-shaped green light emanating from his right hand. First of all, you have to calm down. Shit. I'm going crazy. Issei would exclaim quietly, widening his eyes. Your electronic device is proof that your sanity is stable. The thick voice would exclaim, with a very calm tone. Given what was mentioned by the voice that came out of his hand, Issei would look towards the closest piece of furniture, more precisely, to his cell phone. Issei left his somewhat scared expression to a strange one, giving the benefit of the doubt to everything that was happening right now. The brown-haired put his alarm clock away and grabbed his cell phone, to then turn it on. April 2nd. Issei would say out loud, with his eyes wide open, to then throw himself on his bed, with an indescribable expression on his face. Today is supposed to be the first day of school, and it's April 1st. Now, will you listen to me without saying stupid things? Issei would raise his right hand with a look that gave off some seriousness, as if he was thinking carefully about the proposal. That moment was spoiled when the alarm clock rang through the room. Issei quickly turned it off, not allowing her to say a word. Line jump. The brown-haired man was going to the Kuo Academy in the student outfit, while carrying his small suitcase over his shoulders, and had his cell phone in the other. You're right, there isn't a single photo of everything that happened yesterday. Issei would think, so that later a voice resounded inside her head. As their, paranormal, situations, that fallen angel was in charge of erasing, transforming all memories around your circle, including the photos that were taken together. Hype quote. Issei would frown slightly. That means neither Matsuda nor Motohama will remember Yuma. Issei would think. The chatter in Issei's subconscious was. Abruptly cut short as he collided with a petite white-haired girl. Issei rubbed at his hair in pain, then stood up quickly and gently extended his hand to the girl. Sorry. I was too deep in thought. She would mention Issei, with a nervous smile on her face. The little Alvin girl would accept the protagonist gesture, to then clean her skirt. No problem, but next time be more careful. She would say the girl with a somewhat cold tone, and with an expression that made Issei indecipherable. The brown-haired boy widened his eyes and gave a big smile when he recognized the little Alvina. You are Kaneko Tojo, our academy's mascot. The Alvin girl would nod with her cold expression. You are Issei Hiodo, the boy who entered the academy yesterday, second grade. Issei would pick up his suitcase, while giving him a somewhat intrigued look. That's how it is. Why do you know so much? Issei would wonder internally, in genuine confusion. I have to go. Next time, I hope you'll be more careful where you're walking. Kaneko would say, and then turn around and walk towards the academy. Okay. Issei would declare, while she raised her hand a little in greeting. To then continue walking behind her and plunge back into her thoughts. By the way, in my house you said that the person who revived me is in this academy, can you tell me who he is? Issei would think, it will show itself over time. For now, I plan to talk to you about other things that I consider much more important. Hype quote, I'm all ears. Issei would think with a serious expression on her face. I'll start with the three factions. Line jump. Issei would be inside his classroom, playing with his eraser while having the biology book on the first page with a very concentrated expression, as if he was paying full attention to the class. That means that in addition to the fallen angels faction, there are also two more, the angels faction and the demons faction, Issei would think carefully. Actually, there are more factions. But those three are the most abundant in this region. Hype quote. 
Young Issei, could you continue reading? The professor would ask, while he adjusted his glasses with a smile. Issei would look up in confusion. E. Yes. In this first unit, we will focus on molecular biology. Young Issei. Let's go to the beginning of page number 4. Pay more attention, please. The professor would declare, with a frown. At this, all the women in the hall would look at Issei and chuckle softly. While his two friends turned around on their benches to watch him with a raised eyebrow. I'm sorry, Issei would say with a blush of embarrassment on her face. The professor would just shake his head. It's okay. Just don't do it again. Matsuda, can you continue? Matsuda would just nod with a smile and start reading. Issei changed the pages of the book to hide it, while he kept listening to his inner dragon. Now, I'll tell you something. But first you must prepare yourself mentally. I don't think you want to make another big deal like the one from a second ago. He would say thick voice, with a slight grace in his words. At this, Issei would frown a bit and nod, giving the dragon the signal to drop the bomb. I'll get straight to the point. To be more precise, you weren't revived by that person, but reincarnated as a devil. Therefore, you now belong to the demon faction, thanks to that person who reincarnated you with the chess pieces. Hype quote. The dragon remained silent for a few seconds, to let its bearer process all the information. Everything around Issei became inaudible, he couldn't even hear his own breathing. On the outside, Issei seemed to be very calm. But if you looked at him more closely, his eyes were slightly widened and a cold sweat was slowly running down his face. After a minute, the brown head seemed a bit calmer, so the dragon decided to speak again. Do you have something to say? Hype quote. What would the chess pieces be exactly? Issei would ask, while cold sweat still ran down her face. Line jump. So, I'm a servant of a demon, huh? That sounds creepy. Issei would think, while he began to turn pale, just thinking about what they could do to him. The thick voice would chuckle a bit at the thought of Issei, but would quickly decide to take action to calm him down a bit. Calm down, partner. Even if you are a servant of a high-class devil, you are still a devil, so the members of your new family will not harm you, unless they see fit or necessary. Convenient. Issei would think with a raised eyebrow. That's right. By the way, I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Diedrake, I'm the Dragon of Domination, also known as Sekariote. His proud tone would suffer in his next words. Unfortunately, my incessant fight with the other heavenly dragon, Albion, caused both of us to be sealed inside a sacred gear because of God and other lesser beings. Now, I reside inside your sacred gear, which consists of the power of, boosted gear. The dragon's tone would once again become somewhat imposing and proud. The boosted gear is a very common sacred gear. But with me inside, things change drastically. Boosted gear. The word sacred gear would resonate in Issei's mind, as she remembered how Yuma had mentioned it before. It's a bit complicated to understand, it would be best for you to experience the sacred gear yourself through training. Diedreg would say with a slightly excited tone, since it had been a while since he had unleashed his power. Something that shouldn't be too difficult, considering that you have enough power to communicate with me. Issei again remembered Yuma and how he had killed him, so he frowned at the memories. Okay, I'll try, because for sure, someone else will come back for me if they find out I'm still alive. Diedreg would nod with satisfaction inside the sacred gear. Wise decision, partner. Issei would give a small smile. Thank you for taking the trouble to explain everything to me, Diedreg. Diedreg would widen his green eyes a bit upon hearing Issei's statement, before giving a small smile. No problem. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Issei just nodded internally. But when he was about to say goodbye to the dragon, something interrupted him. Eyes. Hoi eyes. Calling ground. Issei would look around a bit excited, to see who was calling him. His exalted look changed to an exhausted one when he saw who they were. What's wrong? Matsuda, Motohama. Given the somewhat tired attitude of their unconditional friend, they both moved away from their desk a little and both looked at him with raised eyebrows. Is something wrong, eyes? The school's end bell rang about a minute ago and you're still sitting here like an idiot. Matsuda would ask, somewhat worried about his friend. In addition to the fact that you haven't gone out to either of the two recesses. Motohama would say, adjusting her glasses with one hand. 
Issei would slump back in the chair, while looking up at the ceiling with a look somewhat lost in thought. Sorry guys, but I'm not feeling too good today. At Issei's response, Matsuda and Motohama would look at each other with confusion on their faces, to then give a perverted smile and look at the brown-haired man again. I know how you could regain your spirits. Matsuda would say with a big perverted smile, while she took out a dubious cassette from her shirt. Issei would look at Matsuda with a bored expression, then widen his eyes when he saw what he was holding. Issei's reaction was immediate, and he quickly jumped out of his chair. To take the cassette with a big perverted smile. Momo's new volume. Issei's perverted smile would falter a bit, seeing that the erotic image that the cassette presented was having much less of an effect on him than normal. Though considering who he was, it still had quite an effect on him. Anyway, that was something that missed him to death. Matsuda would hug Issei and Motohama around the neck with a big smile on his face. So what are we waiting for? Let's go to my house right now. Line jump. That's right. Show the monster who's boss, Momo. Matsuda would say, while he breathed heavily. I am seriously thinking that this is the best volume of the entire series so far. Motohama would say, as she kept a goofy smile on her face. Issei would be together with his two friends, watching the video quite strangely. Is it really that good? Ah, I like the previous ones much better, Issei would say, as he began to look at the tape with more and more confusion. At their friend's question, Matsuda and Motohama looked at him as if he was crazy. What's wrong? Motohama would ask, with great surprise in his voice. Issei rubbed his hair with great exhaustion, while getting up from the floor of the room. Sorry guys. I'm not feeling well. You've had a long day. I'm going home to get some rest. Both friends would look at Issei with raised eyebrows, and then simply nod. Alright. Matsuda would say. Get well. I would say Motohama. Issei simply nodded his thanks, then left the room, still rubbing his hair tiredly. When Issei left the room, both friends looked at each other with a bit of surprise. What the hell is wrong with him? Matsuda would ask him, so that Motohama just shrugged, having no idea what could be happening to his brown-haired friend. Issei left Matsuda's house, to see that even daylight was spreading through the streets. The chestnut-haired man looked at the street lights to see that they were on. Quickly, he took his cell phone out of his pocket to see what time it was. Just like Diedrag said, no matter if it's night, I'll be able to see everything as if it were still day. He would say to himself under his breath, then put his hands in his pocket and walk towards his house. Meanwhile, he could hear conversations that were great distances away. But he ignored it, since it was something that had been happening to him since dawn, and Diedrag had also explained that it was due to his condition as a demon. Seeing that he had a long way to go to get home, Issei decided to start a conversation with his new and extraordinary friend. Diedrag, can you hear me? Issei would think, loud and clear, mate. The voice would echo inside Issei's mind. Becoming a devil makes my less. Holy, virtues disappear by a large percentage. Issei would ask, with clear doubt in her words. At Issei's question, Diedrag laughed loudly inside his head for a few seconds, making the young man a little annoyed. Indeed, becoming a devil makes the evil in your soul grow to a great extent. Diedrag declared, very seriously. Issei widened his eyes a bit at the dragon's sudden change in attitude. Practically, in one second he was dying of laughter, for the other to be so serious. If so, why do I feel that the opposite is happening to me? Issei would ask with great doubt in her words. Diedrag would frown noticeably. There's something I forgot to tell you. Issei, I have a question to ask you. Do you have any idea why fallen angels are fallen angels, and why devils are devils? The dragon would ask with a serious tone in his words. Issei would raise his gaze to the night sky, while opting for a pensive face and crossing his arms. Why are they like that? Well, the fallen angels fell from heaven because they fell into the temptation of an original sin. Such as lying, murder, lust, among others. Issei would place a hand on her chin, as she further emphasized her thoughts. But demons are different in their own way. Since they were always corrupted angels, since they were born. For that reason, they never had a chance to be in heaven, because they have always been under sins. Exactly. The angels are the purest and most innocent beings in the world, even more than human children. While the fallen angels, 
they are the species that most resembles humans, although they are worse. Once an angel fallen falls before the temptation of a sin, it is almost impossible for him to be redeemed, since he feels a great attraction to that sin, making them extremely dangerous. And if he somehow managed to get rid of his sin o sins, anyway, he would never would be the same again. That happens, because a fallen angel will never again be pure a innocent like an angel. The dragon would say seriously in his words. And what does that have to do with me? Issei would think, while she put both her hands behind her neck and raised an eyebrow. Ah that's what I'm getting at, mate. Demons are beings corrupted to the core, as you said. But that happens for a reason, and that is that when they are born, the corruption of all original sins darkens their soul, including the original sins. Reincarnated, just like you. This has a name, and it is called, demonic corruption. This makes no devil safe from sins, and unlike the fallen angels, no devil would think of redeeming himself, since they are like that by nature. Pipe quote. This would cause Issei to stop pacing and widen his eyes at the new information. Diedreg would quickly clear his throat. Although, there are also rare cases, where demons do not suffer from, demonic corruption, although the cases are practically rare. The dragon would puff out his chest with pride, as he gave a smile. And as you might be thinking, you are one of those cases. Thanks to me, since I have incredible power and that means that corruption can't affect you in the slightest. The dragon would exclaim with clear pride in his words, to later change to a slightly amused tone. Also, if you remember, when we first met I told you that it was your lucky day. And that was because I also did everything possible to take away your impulsive sexual appetites. Pipe quote. That, Issei would yell out loud, making the people passing around him move a little away from him out of fear. This made Diedreg chuckle a bit. You said it yourself, if I get a second chance, I promise not to be a moron again. Pipe quote. I didn't say that exactly. Issei would yell out loud again, making the people move even further apart. Seeing the reaction of the people, Issei quickly calmed down and a small blush of embarrassment broke out on her face. Besides, I didn't want my sex drive to go away. I just wish I could control it. She would think the brown-haired man with a much calmer tone. That's why I said that I reduced your impulsive sexual appetite, that doesn't make you stop seeing women as something, beautiful. Now you won't act like an idiot in front of a well-endowed woman, although that depends a lot on your conviction to that I completely disappear. The dragon's calm tone would change to one of genuine surprise. Fuck. Even with my great power. I couldn't make your impulsive sexual appetite completely disappear, it was a disgustingly dense and giant mass. Diedreg said, while he imagined a gigantic white and viscous mass. Issei would lower his head rather embarrassed, while rubbing his cheek with a finger. I'm sorry. The brown haired would look to his side, to see a small path that led to the park fountain. This made Issei remember Yuma again and lower his head sadly, to then look up from her with great determination and moved towards the source. Issei perched near the fountain, as he recalled all the events that had happened with a heavy heart. His date. Treachery. His death. Her or his promise. Issei clenched his fists tightly as he stared at the fountain with great determination. I said that if I had a second chance, I would change my ways, and that will be. I'm sorry to interrupt your moment, but there's something important I have to tell you. Diedreg's voice would say very seriously because of the harsh thoughts his bearer had had. Issei raised his right hand to look at the green orb with some surprise, giving the signal to Diedreg to continue. In this past millennium, devils and fallen angels have behaved very differently from their nature. They may have evolved for the better, and that would be a very good thing considering your status as a servant. Although, Obviously, there are still devils and fallen angels that are evil, a clear example is that fallen angel and the boss I mentioned. Diedreg's words would make Issei's body visibly relax. Apparently, she was also thinking about that matter. However, take precautions. Diedreg would warn, with the most serious tone that had come out of his mouth so far. Why are you still alive? An Ariad voice made Issei leave his conversation and look up at the sky, to widen his eyes as he couldn't. Again, those wings, Issei would think with great fear, as he watched the subject with the hat and black wings flying in the place. Quickly, the chestnut-haired man looked around realizing that the entire atmosphere of the room had changed drastically, as if they were in another place. The subject would shake his head, 
while looking at Issei seriously. I can't trust Rainair to do her job. But I never thought she couldn't handle a mere human. Rainair. Issei would say while her expression denoted great fear, to then take a step back. This is not the time to think about that. I have to get out of here or they will kill me again. Well, I'll finish the job botched. The fallen angel would say, while making a spear of purple light appear in one of his hands. At this, Issei would widen his eyes further in terror and take an incredible leap backwards. At this, the subject would raise an eyebrow. A normal human wouldn't be able to take such a leap. The man would think carefully, before bowing his shoulders and launching the spear anyway. Issei would quickly cover himself with both of his arms, while closing his eyes tightly. Will the same thing happen again? Will I die here again, barely knowing why they're after me? Will I die without knowing who revived me? Issei would widen his eyes with great determination. If that damn artifact, the sacred gear is so powerful, save me now. Issei would scream at the top of his lungs, causing a red light to cover her entire body for a few seconds, just at the same time that the spear impacted her arms. That, she would say the subject, while gritting her teeth and watching the great flash of red, covering her face with a hand from the strong red light. Diedrake was with a big smile impressed and proud, seeing what had happened. Awesome. He would declare the dragon for himself, while the light around Issei dissipated, revealing the brunette breathing heavily with a kind of red gauntlet with a green gem on his right hand, which was slightly damaged by the Spear of Light. Ah! He managed to activate his sacred gear without doing any training. But how is that possible? Diedreg would turn around, to see something blinking purple. At this, the dragon would widen his eyes. I knew there was something wrong with this boy. His soul has a great affinity with dragons, and for that reason he was able to release him, since he gave off a small bit of my energy. Diedrake would quickly look ahead with a frown. However, his body is not prepared to consume that much energy, so. Issei was still breathing heavily, and after a few seconds his eyes rolled back and he collapsed on the ground. His sacred gear disappeared along with it, making the fallen angel look at him even more surprised than he already was. Her body silks rapidly, Diedrake would say, with great concern in his words. The fallen angel would frown then create another spear of light. That took me by surprise. But it won't work a second time. He would say with a bit of anger at his words, to then launch the attack towards the unconscious Issei. The attack was about to come, but the spear was destroyed by an attack of black flames that appeared out of nowhere. The subject would look up with a raised eyebrow, seeing that a red-colored magic circle had appeared in the place. That symbol, the stranger would say, looking at the magic circle symbol just before it disappeared. I'm sorry, but I can't let you kill my minion. The stranger would chuckle softly, then give a little bow. Sorry, I didn't mean to be against the Grimori family. But it would be better if you take better care of your servant. People might mistake it for wandering devil, like I did. The fallen angel would quickly drop his bow as lightning passed close to his face, but he never dropped his smile. Calm down Akino. I'm sure this fallen angel will leave the area without creating conflict. He would say a redhead, while looking at Akino with a smile. Akino would pass a hand over her face with a somewhat sadistic smile. Whatever you say, President. The stranger would bow again, without abandoning his smile. Thank you for your consideration, heiress of the Grimori clan, Rias Grimori. The subject would quickly fly away, while evil laughter played in the background and black feathers fell from the sky. My name is Donaseek. Make sure you don't forget that name if our paths cross again. Rias would change her smile to a serious and somewhat disgusted expression once the man disappeared. What do we do with him, Rias? Akino would ask, while he watched Issei with a small smile. Rias would give Issei a serious look, and then give a little tired sigh. Looks like we got there just in time and he wasn't harmed, so we'll just take him to his room. Akino simply nodded with a smile then carefully carried the boy. There was no one else in the area, Kaneko would say, as he went out through the trees. Good job, Kaneko, Rias would say with a small smile, to then disperse the effect that had been created in the environment, making everything return to normal. End of the prologue. Chapter 2. Chapter 1. The Nun. If you don't wake up, I'll kill you. If you don't wake up, I'll cut you to pieces. The clock was suddenly smashed against the wall 
courtesy of Issei. Issei would turn over in his bed while still sitting up, in a karate stance, while looking around him with an icy expression on his face. I'd say good morning, but you don't seem to be in a good mood. The voice in Issei's hand made the young man visibly calm down. Issei looked around with a bored look, feeling that he had lived this before. I think Don alive is quite comforting. It's a good thing your allies were following you, otherwise you wouldn't be here right now. Issei would just rub his hair and give a big tired sigh. Great. Two days. Two attempts to make me disappear. Issei would look at his school bag intently for several seconds. Then he frowned slightly. I think I'm doing something about it, the chestnut would think. Chapter 1. The Nun. See you later, Issei would exclaim, as he adjusted his shoes and rested the suitcase behind his shoulder. Whatever you say, bye. Issei's father's voice would resound, making the chestnut-haired man shake his head in disgust. Issei would leave his house, to then look towards the window of his home and make sure that his parents were not watching him. Suddenly, Issei ran off in the completely opposite direction from Kuo Academy. Are you sure about this, mate? Diedrag's voice would resonate inside Issei. Issei would only give a small smile, and then speak telepathically with his partner. My parents won't notice, since they don't care much about my academic results and other issues that surround me. If I miss a day or two at the academy they won't notice. I'm so glad you decided to train so soon. He would mention Diedrag with a somewhat excited tone. The way Issei was, the dragon never expected him to take the whole thing so seriously. But if he thought about it, something very important was at stake, and Issei knew it very well. Issei would continue running at full speed towards a nearby park, while his face grew serious at Diedrag's words. They already tried to make me disappear twice, and the third time is the charm. But they won't take my life, but a defeat. I like the way you think, mate. Pipe quote. Line jump. Are you sure this will do? Issei would think, while she gritted her teeth tightly for making an election with a railing that was in the park. If you increase your stamina, strength, speed and other attributes, you will be able to awaken the sacred gear at will in a short time. But it will require much more effort to fully master it. Diedrag would answer with a wise tone in his words. Issei would fall to the ground exhausted, while breathing heavily. It's enough for me to wake her up. I don't want to get killed just for having this thing inside me. No offense. Diedrag would chuckle internally, making Issei a bit confused. What is so funny? Nothing. It's just that all my wielders feel special when they manage to awaken my power, and you're the first wielder who doesn't seem to like the idea of being the domination dragon. Pipe quote. Issei would shake his head, then wipe the sweat and open his suitcase. Inside were a large number of sandwiches and two bottles of water, but no books. I am not the domination dragon, you are. Issei would pick up a bottle of water to give him a big sip. You've already been working out for two hours. You should take a short break, since your body isn't used to training like this. Diedrag would say with a somewhat worried tone, making Issei give a small smirk. Are you telling me that a devil's body is quite weak? Not if you train it properly though it doesn't compare in the slightest to a dragon's body. The dragon would respond, with a clear tone of pride in his last words. Issei would get up from the ground and close his suitcase, before starting to run in the park. That sounds great, but unfortunately I'm a demon, and I have no choice but to push my body to achieve quick results. Diedrag would smile to himself, seeing how his wielder was pushing himself too hard. Maybe it was good that the brat is a skinny nobody, because now that he has awakened his power, he has no choice but to train to control it, otherwise his life will hang by a thread. Diedrag would think to himself with a pleased smile, before turning serious. Speaking of that thread, it seemed that that demon already wanted to reveal to Issei his true identity. Finally, he would shrug with a listless expression. I suppose he will have to wait another day or two. Line jump. He didn't come to school, and he didn't even walk the path to her. Rias, Akino and Kiba would look seriously at Kaneko for the recent information. The four demons were in the occult club, in the old school building. Did we think the worst? Kiba would ask, as he rubbed his shoulder with a serious look. Akino would lean back further on the sofa, while watching Kiba, who was on the other. I don't believe it. She would answer the demon with her typical sadomasochistic smile. 
Rias would nod at Akino's words, while looking at some papers that she had on her counter. Akino is right. Issei's house is near Kuo Academy. I don't think the fallen angels wanted to go that far into my territory. Then what do you propose? Kiba would say with a smile, not paying too much attention to the subject. He didn't even know the boy, therefore he didn't care much about that matter. Rias would look at Kaneko with a smile. Kaneko, I need you to watch Hyoto Issei's house first thing in the morning tomorrow. If you see he's not leaving for school, try infiltrating the house and find out if he's there. If he's not, just open dead. Rias would say as he shrugged at his last words, going back to his papers. Akino would just laugh in a somewhat strange way, looking at Rias. That's a pity, just when you had the chance to add someone else to your entourage. Rias would rest her hand on the counter, with a somewhat downcast expression. He's a great addition to my entourage, considering he took my eight pawn pieces. Speaking of which, it's very strange that his soul has never linked 100% with the demon pieces. Now we will have to find his grave to extract the pieces of his body, if he really died. She would say Kaneko with his typical empty tone, while eating a chocolate. Rias would put the papers on the table, giving a tired sigh. It's a nuisance that the binding didn't work out as I expected. Because of that, I can't track it with my pieces. It is certainly a very curious specimen. Akino would say while he licked his lips. Line jump. Issei would keep running through the huge park. About an hour had passed and he was still running non-stop, although she was going at a fairly moderate speed. A large amount of sweat was pouring down his face, but even so his facial expression looked very calm. That was thanks to her talking to his fellow intern. Hey, now that I'm wondering, before you said that the cases of a devil without demonic corruption were rare, do you have any idea if there are any others alive who are like me? I mean, after all, you told me that you were locked up it's been a millennium and maybe you know someone. Vanishing Dragon. Issei would stop dead when he noticed how Diedrag's voice had a much more serious tone than normal. I don't know if he's already awakened, but there are chances that he's a devil or a fallen angel. So both would be special cases between their respective species. However, that, doesn't mean that you guys will become friends. Noticing the tense atmosphere that had been generated by the last question between the two, Issei was forced to change the subject, as he absentmindedly resumed his jog. Speaking of Albion, you told me that their fight was a millennium ago. So, how many years can supernatural beings live? Pipe quote. Hum, I don't know exactly how old I am. But dragons were the first supernatural species to populate this world. First Great Red emerged, and after a while Albion and I were born. Calculating the times, I think I'm around a few 200,000 years. Pipe quote. As he had warned, the conversation had once again shifted to a calm environment. But Issei did not expect such a response. 200,000 wait, what? Issei would scream in her mind, skidding to a halt as she had a look of complete shock on her face. If I follow your logic, how the hell is it that my mistress is still in the same school? Supernatural beings have a period where their aging is almost completely reduced. It is from the age of 21 until death. Probably, when he turns 21 he will have to go back to hell, that o start erasing memories like crazy. Pipe quote. Issei would put both hands on his knees, breathing heavily. The brown-haired man sat down on a nearby bench to rest, while he rummaged through his briefcase for food and water. So considering that all supernatural beings have the same life expectancy, how old can a supernatural being be seen physically speaking? I could be a good example of that. Considering that I looked 40 years old when I died, I can say that every 5,000 years of mine is a human year. Although, obviously those 5,000 years is a long time, no matter who you are. A supernatural being oh no. Now, did you get it? Pipe quote. Issei would put his bottle aside as he rubbed his cheek in wonder. I think so. Most likely, everyone will continue to meet at that academy in the future, because it's no coincidence that in all schools, just your mistress is in that one. Pipe quote. Issei rubbed at his hair in confusion at not understanding exactly what Diedrag meant by that last, but his eyes quickly widened as a realization hit him very hard. Wait a second. If I'm a demon now, that means. Shit. How the fuck am I going to explain my parents to them? I was wondering at what point you would realize. 
Diedrag would say with an amused tone in his voice. Line jump. Yummy boy. Kaneko watched from afar as Issei left her house with her typical stoic expression, although her face changed a bit when she saw that Issei looked towards her house with a mysterious aura and left in the opposite direction of Kuo Academy. At least he's alive. I'd better get him to the president before his luck runs out. Kaneko would think, as he began to follow closely. But first, I'd like to know exactly what he's doing. Issei would keep running with a smile on his face, unaware of his spy. I thought I was going to hurt all over today, but I feel fantastic. Issei would exclaim with a somewhat goofy smile on her face. Good thing I'm giving you the proper stretches, oh otherwise you'd be lying on your bed like the dead by now. Also, you should thank your demonic body. I wonder at what point your excessive improvement will slow down. The dragon would exclaim with a deductive voice. Issei would simply increase his smile, as he began to run with greater speed. The longer the rapid growth lasts, the better. Being a devil has its advantages. What the hell is he doing? Kaneko would think, while he followed quickly. Three hours later. Shit, I'm already completely exhausted. Issei would think, as he wiped the sweat from his face and tried to regulate his breathing. Issei was in the same park, sitting on one of the benches facing the street. It's normal that you're tired. You were running for three hours almost without breaks. Hype quote. Issei would just smile nervously, and then go to eat a sandwich. Doing all this leaves me starving. Issei would think, then take a big bite of the sandwich with a goofy smile on her face. Och. Issei would put his food aside, seeing how a girl who was dressed as a nun stumbled up the sidewalk. Issei would leave his sandwich in the suitcase to offer to help him. Are you okay? Issei would ask with a slightly worried tone, while he extended one of her hands. The young woman would look at Issei with a smile as she accepted the helping gesture. Yes, I'm fine. It's just that I'm very clumsy. Issei would only increase his smile. No problem. Issei would quickly kneel down to gather the things that the young woman had dropped, causing her to be a little surprised by the boy's so gentle gesture. Issei would pick himself up from the ground with all of the nun's belongings with a friendly smile. This is yours. Thank you so much. She would say the nun with a slight blush as she made a small bow. Issei just waved his hand dismissively, indicating that it was nothing. He was about to go back to her bench, but he noticed that the nun seemed to have a confused face as she looked in various directions. Something happens, Issei would ask, while he closed his suitcase, without first removing one of the sandwiches from it. The young woman would lower her head embarrassed by the chestnut-haired question. Well, it's just... I'm new here and I don't know where I am, she would say with a blush of embarrassment on her face. Issei would give her a chuckle, holding out the sandwich towards her. If you want I can help you. It wouldn't be a bother, since I have the whole day free. Are you serious? Thank you very much, the nun would exclaim, as she accepted Issei's sandwich with a big smile. Hyodo Issei, why were you absent for two days at the academy? Shit. It was the only thing Issei could think of, while she began to sweat excessively. Issei would turn his face like a robot, to see that his academy's mascot was looking at him with his typical expressionless face. Issei's frozen expression would change to a very confused one upon seeing Kaneko. Kaneko. Why isn't he at the academy? Kaneko quickly took Issei's hand and began to drag him towards the academy. Let's go now, before the principal expels you for vandalism. For vandalism. Issei would think with his eyes rolling. He would quickly look at the nun with a slightly guilty expression. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to help you. Ask someone here for directions. They will surely help you. The nun would just smile and nod, then look at Issei's sandwich and take a small bite. It's very good. The nun would think with a blush on her cheeks. Line jump. Kaneko, can you explain to me what's going on? Issei would ask, as she tried to break free of her powerful grip. Kaneko would let go and stare into his eyes, making Issei a bit serious. What I did was stop you from killing that nun. That, Issei would roll his eyes at the answer. Kaneko would narrow her eyes. Maybe that nun belongs to the angel's faction, and you would get the president in trouble if you killed her without warning. At Kaneko's answer, Issei would widen his eyes in surprise. You know about the factions. Wait, you're at Kuo Academy and the woman who reincarnated me is there. Issei would point at Kaneko with wide eyes. 
You are a demon. At Issei's scream, everyone around would look at the boy confused, and then continue with their business. Kaneko would quickly cover her mouth while looking around. I don't know how you found out about the factions, but you're coming with me right now. He would whisper under his breath. Issei would just nod, seeing that the little Albina didn't seem to be dangerous. Besides, the most likely thing was that he would take her to that president and have the chance to meet the woman who reincarnated him. Although he was no longer human, Issei was very grateful to her for giving him another chance to live. Line jump. We are here, President. Kaneko would pass into the living room, bowing slightly to Rias, while he calmly sat on an armchair. I was already starting to think that we were unlucky, Rias would think out loud. I never imagined that the president of the occult club was a demon, Issei would say, as he entered the living room and looked in various directions, being amazed by the cleanliness of the place. Akino, Kiba, and Rias would look at Kaneko with a raised eyebrow. I don't know how, but he already knows everything. He made that clear to me when we were on our way to the academy. He would answer the albina with his typical expression, while he took a box that was on the small wooden table, beginning to take out different candies. Well, I guess that saves us the more complicated introductions, Kiba would mention, as he waved his hand at his side. Issei would immediately catch Kiba's intention and sit next to the blonde-haired man. Issei would move his legs excitedly while looking at everyone present. Kaneko already mentioned his piece to me, can you tell me what yours are? Again everyone but Kaneko would look at Issei in surprise at his knowledge. How come you know so much? Rias would think, with a slight frown. My name is Kiba Yudo, I am the knight. Kiba would introduce himself with a small friendly smile, as he bowed his hand. I don't know why, but I don't like this guy's face very much, Issei would think with a slight grimace, as he shook the knight's hand. My name is Akino Himahima, and I am the queen. It's nice to meet you, Hiodo. She would introduce Akino with her typical daring look, causing Issei to blush a bit and make an idiot face, but she would quickly shake her face and put on a serious expression. Remember what you promised. It will be difficult, but I will keep it. After that thought, Issei gave a friendly smile and gently greeted the queen. Finally, Rias got up from her desk and placed one of her hands on her chest, making Issei have an idiot face for a second, but he would quickly correct her. My name is Rias Gramori, and I am the king. Therefore, you are my servant. The redhead would answer, while everyone spread their bat wings, Issei included. Welcome to my family, Rias would say, while he widened his smile a little more, so that later his eyes had a slightly dangerous shine. Before Rias could say another word, Kaneko quickly got up from her seat. I found Hyodo talking to a nun without feeling like killing her. It means that somehow he didn't suffer from demonic corruption. Kaneko would quickly exclaim, interrupting Rias. They would all look at Issei with wide eyes at the statement. Okay. Thanks for letting me know, Kaneko. Rias would say, making Kaneko sit back down on the couch. Rias would sit at his desk while he placed a hand on his chin. Demon corruption is supposed to happen 100% when it comes to humans, but you know a lot about factions, and on top of that you don't have demon corruption, that just leads me to think that. Indeed, Miss Grimori. The thick voice that came from Issei's hand made everyone look at the young man somewhat strangely, except for Rias who had a somewhat triumphant smile on her face. As if he had won the lottery. I never thought to have the Sekiryote under my servitude, but it is a pleasant surprise to know. Diedrag's maniacal laughter would be heard throughout the room, and this time everyone had to be confused and surprised by it, including Issei. Servitude. I will never serve a demon, nor an angel, O oh fallen angel. Did you forget how they left our species after the holy war? The only one I will listen to will be my companion. Hey Diedrag, you hadn't told me about this, Issei would think, somewhat uncomfortable with the situation. Rias would just bow her shoulders with a smile. As you say. Still, it was the dragon's fault that their own kind ended up like this. I must thank them, though, because if it hadn't been for the constant dragon fights going on in all the regions, the holy war wouldn't have happened. Ended on good terms with the three factions. Battles. They only came together when the battle between the apocalypse dragon, Great Red, and Ophis nearly destroyed all of existence. Otherwise, they would have gone on with their stupid world domination gorillas. What's more, 
If the revolution hadn't happened demonic in those days, I'm sure the demons would have continued to fight for power, but the countless massive casualties they inflicted on themselves made them ridiculous as a species, and look how they ended up now, tamer and smaller than mere cockroaches. He would say the dragon with a defiant and amused tone in his voice. Rias would lower her gaze and grit her teeth tightly at what the dragon mentioned. Apparently, he had completely crushed her in the verbal argument. Hey Diedrag, let's calm down. Please. Issei would scold with a frown, was it so necessary to resort to something that happened more than a thousand years ago? It's okay that as supernatural beings they can live much longer. But a thousand years is a thousand years, and even if it is an ephemeral part in its long life, it is still an absurdly gigantic amount of time, do I need to tell you how many one thousand years is in days? Okay. Mate. It just gave me a little courage. Diedrag would mention, somewhat regretful for getting carried away in the heat of the moment. Don't worry. I'm sure they'll understand. Issei would say with an understandable smile. Rias would give a tired sigh, making Issei look at her a bit embarrassed. Relax. You don't need to apologize. You're not the one who said all those words after all. Rias would declare with a gentle smile, causing Issei to give her a smile. Thank you, President. Rias would just shake her head, then look at him seriously. Listen to me, since you are now part of my entourage, you will have to join the occult club. You will also have to do some errands as a demon that humans ask for and other things that will raise our reputation as demons. Issei would just nod in understanding. Diedrag had already told me about these things, so I already have some idea what he's about. Rias would just nod satisfied by Issei's response. That is very good, because it saves a lot of explanations. Now, I would like to ask you a question. Issei would look at her somewhat intrigued. Anyone you want, President. Rias would frown slightly. Why did you miss two days of the academy? Don't you realize how your parents will be if they find out? Issei would just chuckle making everyone look at him strangely. My parents. They're better off the further away I stay from home. They can't stand me much because they always wanted a daughter, and somehow that frustration has crept up on me over the years. They tolerate me anyway. They would all have a common thought. Do you tolerate me? At Issei's response, everyone would look at each other with a somewhat awkward silence. Issei would smile again, breaking with the awkward environment that was being generated. And regarding the first question, I am trying to voluntarily awaken my sacred gear so that I have a chance to defend myself. I thought so. Kaneko would think with her typical expression as she looked at him out of the corner of her eye and ate a piece of chocolate calmly. I understand your concern, but you can't miss the academy because of that. Especially, since you're safer here with us. And besides, this academy is the territory of the Grimori and Citri family. No one will dare enter here without permission, unless they want to have a lot of trouble. Especially, if we're talking about other factions. I would explain, rebuke Rias seriously. Issei would slightly lower his head in embarrassment. I understand. I won't miss tomorrow. Rias would smile at Issei's answer. Okay. You can go now. There's no point in entering classes now. I want you to be here after school tomorrow. Issei would just nod in agreement. Line jump. I think I know why I was getting the hang of hating this guy. Issei would think, while his eyes seemed to be empty and a depressive aura surrounded him completely. Issei would be watching how Kiba was completely surrounded by women, while the blonde-haired boy had a nervous smile on his face due to the great tumult that had been generated at the exit of Kuo Academy. How the hell? It's barely the fifth day of school and he's already surrounded by women, that bastard. Motohama would grit his teeth with great jealousy, as he watched as Kiba was surrounded by women. Matsuda would adjust his glasses with a very serious look. I agree with Motohama. Just having a cute face is already better than us. Issei would turn around and start zombie walking towards the old school building. At this, his two friends would look at him somewhat worried. Are you still a little sick? They would both ask in unison. Issei would turn his face with a fake smile. It's not that. Today I joined a club and I have my responsibilities. Matsuda and Motohama would look at each other with raised eyebrows. A club. Motohama would ask really confused. Matsuda would smile greedily. She probably she signed up for the kendo club. You know, there are a lot of pretty women in that place. Motohama would start crying comically. Are you serious? 
and he didn't invite us as best friends with him. Matsuda would give a smirk and his glasses would shine, indicating that he was up to something. I've got better than that. I found a hole in her dressing room wall. Motohama would acquire a dangerous gleam in his eyes, while becoming incredibly serious. Enlighten me with the great knowledge of him, sir. Line jump. Well, this could be a problem. He would say Rias with a hand on his chin, while he seriously watched as Issei couldn't create a magic circle. Issei would have a depressive aura, while leaning against a wall. Diedrag has already told me. The amount of magical reserves in my body are almost nil. Rias would just shake her head in amusement as she thought of a way to complete the quests without the need for Issei to use a magic circle. I know. Rias would snap her fingers with a smile. At this, Issei would snap out of his depression and look at her intently. We can use a more conventional method, like going house to house. Issei would quickly shake his head in great disapproval. No, 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 no. What will happen to my training? Oh, you're right. Rias would look up at the ceiling, while looking for a possible solution. Can't you lend him the bike outside? That way he'll get his errands done quickly, and get a good warm-up along the way. We'd kill two birds with one stone. Diedrag's voice echoed in the room, and both young men had to agree with that idea. Okay, but be careful. That bike is Akino's. Rias would warn, while he handed some pamphlets to Issei. Don't worry. Issei would exclaim with a big smile between his teeth, before quickly leaving the place. Rias would change her smile to a serious look. She put one of his fingers in her ear and a small magic circle came out of it. I need you to keep an eye on Issei. He doesn't have enough magic to use magic circles and something might happen to him along the way. The customers are the same as usual. A familiar voice would echo through the magic circle. As ordered, President. Line jump. Issei would be going at a high speed on the bike, but he seemed to not be tired at all. Apparently, the effects of the training began to be seen much faster than normal. Although, of course, he was not someone very normal to say. Comrade, why do you follow his orders without reproach? Hype quote. At Diedrag's question, Issei would put on a pensive face. It's true that now I want to awaken my sacred gear so that I can defend myself. But I also owe a lot to the president for reincarnating me, and I think this is a good way to repay her. I guess fulfilling my services will make her happy, and that way I'll be happy too. Issei would smile. Also, she doesn't seem to be a bad person, despite being a devil. Just like everyone else, she seems to be people I can trust. Diedrag would lower his head while thinking carefully about his wielder's words. I have to agree with you. His attitude completely surprised me. Hype quote. Issei would increase his smile when he saw that his partner thought the same. Diedrag would frown not understanding certain things. Even so, in all this time, right after the holy war, did their instincts take over? And that they did it together with the fallen angels seems even stranger to me, there's something that doesn't quite add up to this story. By the way Diedrag, there is something that has been tormenting me ever since you told me about the life expectancy of supernatural beings. At Issei's doubt, Diedrag would come out of his little world and pay attention to Issei. How come you managed to have so many bearers, if you were only sealed for a thousand years? Issei would ask with genuine interest. Diedrag would chuckle a bit, due to his wielder's curiosity. That's simple. All of my wielders are always human, and have never turned into demons. That, and other factors, make my wielder number somewhat high for just a millennium. Obviously, you're the first wielder that she becomes a demon. And taking advantage of the fact that we are talking about this, I will also tell you that supernatural women are extremely, infertile, because they can only have between one and three children in their entire long life. There is also the possibility that a supernatural man impregnates a human, but that is highly frowned upon and happens once in a very long time. And if, before you ask, if someone is half human and half, something, they still have a normal lifespan. Issei would whistle in surprise. Wow Diedrake, you have all the knowledge in the world, but I guess it's normal if you live so many years. I wonder how smart those who live so many years are. Having absolute knowledge doesn't make you smarter. It just makes it so that no one in the world can call you ignorant. Diedrag would exclaim with a clear tone of wisdom in his words. The conversation with Diedrag would be suddenly interrupted, when the whole atmosphere changed drastically. 
Issei braked the bike hard, while looking in various directions clenching his teeth. Shit. It's this atmosphere again, and I know it can't mean anything good. He would think the brownhead, quickly getting off the bike. It took me a while to find you, but I was finally able to. Issei would quickly turn around. Who's there? Issei would see the black wings again, making him frown and automatically, his arm would light up red. Boost. Issei would stare at his arm with wide eyes seeing that he had activated his sacred gear just by thinking about it in a split second. Besides that strange sound that made him feel much stronger, a woman with black wings would be slowly coming down from the sky until she touched the ground. A boosted gear. I see you haven't been wasting any time these four days, but a little toy like that won't be enough to beat me. The woman's eyes would widen as she felt something cold and metallic brushing against the surface of her neck. Sorry to interrupt your grand entrance, but don't hurt Hyodo. The woman would glance back with a small smile. I guess you are another slave of that Grimori, oh am I wrong? My name is Kiba Yudo, it's nice to meet you. Kiba would say, showing a condescending smile. Oh, Prince Charming has arrived. Issei would say, showing himself totally reluctant to accept Kiba's help. Charming Prince. Kiba would think with his eyes rolling. My name is Kalawarner, and would you please lower your sword? I did not come with the intention of fighting, just to warn you. Kiba's sword would squeeze Kalawarner's neck even more, making the woman lose her smile and a small trickle of blood run down her neck. I think you can still talk without cutting yourself. Kiba would reply, still holding on to her condescending smile. Kalawarner would smile again and proceed to explain. We're with a group of fallen angels at the abandoned Kuo church, just outside their territory. So what? Issei would think with a raised eyebrow. One of our new companions arrived today, and she had traces of the devil in her belongings. We quickly asked her if she had come across anyone and if they had tried to harm her, and she mentioned the brown-haired boy. Kalawarner would declare, pointing at Issei. Kiba would just shake his head. And how can you know it was him? At that question, Kalawarner gave Issei a mischievous smile. Because the nun explained his physique to us very well, and coincidentally we have another girl who also knows him very well. Issei would lower his head and clench his fists tightly. Yuma. The woman would cross her arms, glancing sideways at Kiba. I'm just telling them to stay out of our business, and that way we'll avoid unwanted circumstances. Kiba would withdraw the sword with a gentle smile. It must have been a misunderstanding. Kalawarner would give a smirk. Yes, a misunderstanding. After those words, he would soar into the heavens and disappear with a magic circle, making the whole environment return to normal. Kiba disappeared his sword and changed his smile to a somewhat worried look when he saw Issei's expression. Issei would stop clenching his fists. He would pick up his bike and start riding. I'll go carry out the orders. Issei mentioned, with half of her face shadowed. End of chapter. Thanks for watching please like share and subscribe for more next part coming soon.